Okay, we have an Alabama native returning home, Logan Stenberg, who would like the first question. Front row. Hold on one second. Can we get the microphone? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm Drew DeArmond, WCZ in Radio Huntsville, Alabama. We're on ESPN 97.7 The Zone. We're close to your high school program in Wade Waldrop. But talk about you were the first kid to sign a big Power 5 SEC offer out of there and your career that's really been an amazing journey so far. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, coming out of James Clemens, really, um, really proud of those coaches over there and uh, what they're producing. And I'm very thankful for them. I wouldn't be here without, you know, Coach Swearingen or Coach Waldrop. And, uh, you know, since I signed to Kentucky, they've had much, you know, a great group of guys come out of there, LeBron Ray, Kyrie McDonald, all of them, Monty Rice. So they're doing great, and I couldn't be happier to be from there. Front row to your left. Logan, what does it mean to come from the North Alabama area to return here to Hoover uh, and do this? And what's your experience been like so far? How are you enjoying SEC Media Days? Yeah, it's been great. It's like a homecoming. You know, my uh, brothers met me in the lobby, so I got to see them for the first time in a while. So that was awesome. Uh, it just means a lot, you know, to where Coach Stoops thinks that I'm a leader and that I have an influence on the team to where he wanted to bring me down here. I'm just very thankful for this opportunity. Uh, to your right, second row. Caroline Grace, WAFF out of Huntsville, Alabama. Going off of both of those questions, what does it mean that so many kids are getting recruited from the area that you are from to Power 5 schools or even in the SEC? Yeah, I take pride in it. It may be false pride. I doubt I had as much as, uh, to do with that as I think I did. But uh, I'm, very, I'm very prideful in that to see uh, how well they're doing year to year. And, um, you know, the caliber of guys coming out of there, everybody's just so good nowadays. So to see that they're really signing Division One scholarships every year, it's, it's, it's very awesome. To your left, front row again. Logan, to see your name on the, you know, I'm sure you saw the Sporting News second team, All-Americans, to, to be named with not just the top players in the SEC, but the top players in the country, and you're, you're one of them. What does that mean to you, that honor? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just that. It's an honor. Uh, it, it's, it's very awesome, but it can... It doesn't mean everything. You know, we're going to go to work this year. It's only an accolade, and it's not. It's preseason. It doesn't mean anything at this point. So it's really just uh, putting more pressure on me, to be honest with you. So, uh, But we're going to take that, and we're going to do great things this year and hopefully get that accolade at the end of the year when it means something more. Kentucky obviously really changed the, the, the conversation surrounding the program last year with all the, the success you guys had. What is it going to take uh, for your team to, to keep this going, you know, the 10 win season? What is it going to take to keep all this going? Yeah, we're really just building off of last season, you know. Uh, I think it all started with that Florida game. Uh, we, we took a lot of momentum from that and really uh, we got guys to buy in to say, you know, we really can. We can do whatever we want. We can win games. We can compete with anybody out there. And we've been taking this off season to really just get bigger, faster, stronger working on uh, you know, our team chemistry and really uh, our technique and just getting ready for this season, do everything we can to win as many games as possible. In the back and the cameras at the top. Okay. Last year you had Bunchy. You don't have him now, but you returned Landon Young from his knee injury. We don't talk about the O-line as much, so what dynamic do you have this year maybe that you didn't have a year ago? Yeah, I mean, super sad to see Bunchy and George both leave. They were, uh, you know, great role models and gr even greater people, honestly. But uh, this year going in, I think that, you know, we have a lot of returning uh, talent. Landon started a lot of games for us before getting injured. Uh, me and Drake both have started uh, two years in a row. Uh, the right side is going to be stout. A lot of uh, snaps under the uh, right guard position, whether it's Mason Wolf or Luke Fortner. Uh, and then we have a little bit of, uh, we have a true sophomore on the edge at right tackle. So we got to get him a little more comfortable with playing in front of big time teams and uh, just get him more comfortable with the offense. And we should be stout this year. To your right against the wall. Hey, Logan. Michael Braddon from Saturday Down South. There was some speculation this offseason that Eddie Grand got uh, an offer to leave to go to Georgia, but he obviously decided to stay. What uh, the consistency there for the offense, how big is that for this upcoming season? Yeah, it gives us just another reason to work hard and play hard for him. You know, uh, Coach Grant is uh, just an awesome person. I could have not ever asked for a greater OC. He's there whenever you need him. Um, he had a great opportunity at Georgia, but I, we are so glad that he stayed here. You know, it just really shows that how much that he loves his team and how much he believes in us. Okay, to your right, uh, third row. Tatum Everett, Fox 17, Nashville. On your bio on the website, it says one word to describe you is nasty. Is that a word you chose for yourself, yeah. or is that, or is it? Did they write that for you? How did that? 
Yeah, definitely not chosen for myself. I've kind of given that stigma uh, throughout the team. Uh, the defense, they, they don't like me in camp usually. Uh, I've been known to, yeah, we, we get in stuff, you know, tuffles and stuff. So uh, it, it was given to me not self-proclaimed. To your right again, second row. Coach Stoops talked to us about how a lot of people don't realize that the offensive line sets the tone for the entire team. So can you talk to us about how you and your teammates take on that leadership position and that role of setting the tone for your entire team? Yeah, as an offensive line, we really take pride in that. And it all starts with uh, Coach Slarman, you know. He comes in every day and he preaches to us, hey, guys, it all starts up front. Coach Green, you hear him every day. Bigs lead the way, you know. So it's really ingrained in us that if we want the offense to be uh, successful, we have to win our one-on-one -on -one blocks. We have to be successful. A spinoff question. A lot of people say the offensive linemen as a group are the most interesting to talk to. Do you buy into that? I would say so. I'm pretty awesome. Uh, I, I would say the rest of our offensive line is pretty great too. You know, a lot of uh, strange characters, but uh, you definitely don't get the same uh, the same personality. You know. What's what's different about talking to an offensive lineman as a quote unquote skill position? Well, you know, I think since we don't ever get in front of the mic, uh, we have a lot to say. So uh, when we get the chance, we make sure we, you know we pound it down. <laughs> in the back, camera. Can I have a three-part question, but they're quick questions. First off, how has Terry improved? Okay. How does the running back situation change? Mm -hmm. And Coach Stoop said you were more disciplined this year. Kind of piggyback off of being yeah. the nasty part. Okay, so uh, to start with the first question, Terry has improved, you know, uh, he's moved mountains. He's uh, in the weight room every day, just throwing up big weight. He's out there seven on seven, throwing the ball around, getting with the receivers, making sure that connection is going to be tight this year. Um, at running back, we have three guys coming in to really replace Benny. We got uh, Cavassier, Chris, and AJ all coming in, all great runners, you know, all a little different. Uh, but I think that we're going to see all three of them play significant time this year. Um, and then what was the last question? Oh. Okay, yes, yeah, okay. Uh, so this past year, I was more disciplined. I had a few personal fouls, and I, I, they, finally, uh, they finally drove it home that, hey, you're not going to be doing this every week. If you keep getting a personal foul, we are going to, uh, we're going to punish you. So they made it very clear. So this year, we're going to go, we're going to aim for no personal fouls. We're going to, uh, you know, t we're going to teeter on that line of being nasty and, you know, being a trash talker, but we're not going to cross it. Okay, right here in front. Uh, and Logan, I wanted to ask you, uh, first of all, what would it mean to you uh, now that after coming uh, from James Clemens and kind of making history to, to be voted a captain at Kentucky? Because obviously they think enough of you as a leader to bring you here today. And then the second question, I know Freddie Maggard's taken a step away, but he was, of course, a big part of your guys' staff. He's, on our radio show, he made a statement that's going to come true. He told me, Damian Harris left the state of Kentucky to come to Alabama, and you left Alabama to go to Kentucky. He told me, he said, Drew, mark my words, mm -hmm. this will be a fair trade in the end. He said both of them will be NFL players. What would it mean to you to ultimately continue to grind and, and reach the, the highest level? Yeah, it means everything to me. You know, that's obviously the goal is to get to the NFL. And uh, we're so sad to see Freddie leave. You know, he was a huge part in uh, everyday Kentucky football uh, lifestyle. You know, he was a great guy. He meant nothing but the best, so we wish nothing. We wish nothing but the best for him as well. But uh, Freddie really became a big friend of mine, at, you know, in the facility. He was a great guy. He'd have your back no matter what, and I'd go in there and talk to him for an hour or two just to hang out with him. He was, he's awesome. So, but to answer your question, I think it would mean everything for me to get to the NFL and to really, uh, you know, make that statement true. To your right again, second row. All right. So you claim that you're pretty awesome, and that. <laughs> You want the chance to talk, but you don't get the mic a lot. So is there anything that you want to say, or maybe is there a question that you want to be asked, but you haven't been asked yet? Oh, that's a hard question. Uh, no, I can't, nothing off the top of my head. I just really want people to, you know, to, to watch Kentucky football this year and to just stop overlooking us and realize that, hey, we, we mean business and that we're going to come to play every Saturday. Right here on the front row. You talked about the characters on the offensive line. Do we have some examples? I mean, I know you're probably you're right next to Drake a lot. You've done a lot of stuff. What are some of his quirks and maybe some of the quirks of the other guys that your teammates with there? Uh, Drake's just a funny guy. I'll give you, you know, Landon, he is all about fishing, a country boy. We give him a hard time because he grew up in Lexington, which is not a very uh, redneck area. But he, he claims to be super country. What? So we give him a hard time about that all the time. Um, but it's just funny. You know, everybody's got their different quirks. and. Uh, we, we definitely like to push their buttons, and uh, it, it's, we're a pretty funny group. 
Integrated strategic communications is your major. How does that factor into this room, into your performance? Oh, man. I would be on the other side of the uh, camera. I'd be trying to figure out how to advertise myself. But uh, so I, I guess I'm trying to give them what they want a little bit. You know, I graduated in May with that degree and a business minor. So I'm really proud of that. Do we have anything else? A terrific talker here. Yes, to your right against the wall. Well, speaking of personalities, got to ask you about Cash Daniel. Is he a big trash talker on the practice field? And do you have any funny stories about, about him? Yeah, you know, me and Cash are uh, we're arch nemesis on the field. Uh, we uh, we definitely like to get under each other's skin, and we try to bury each other every time we get a chance. So uh, it's definitely I, I would say we're t the two hardest hitting people on the team, and uh, it's a great collision when we get the chance to hit each other. In the back, yes. We talked about Bunchy and that big pancake he had on Florida, and you said all he did was watch it over and over. <laughs> if you have that highlight this year, are you going to do what he did and just constantly have it on replay? Yeah, he's going to see this and text me later. Um, but, yeah, he, uh, I, I would do the same, though. If I have, have a pancake block like that, it's definitely going to be, uh, it's going to be on rerun. We're going we're to see what I did and try to replicate it every, uh, every game. Is there a story begging to be written that hasn't been written about your team? I think the story is, is just we're going to create a legacy at Kentucky, you know. Uh, the past four or five years, we've had incredible recruiting classes. We have athletes. We have depth. We have the, a great coach. We have great players. It's really just we have to go out there and show on a consistent year, yearly basis that we're going to be one of the top teams in the country, and we're going to play against the best teams, and we're going to beat those teams. Right here in the front. Just, you know, you're coming up on your senior year. What has John Schlarman meant to you, everything he went through last season and, and him sticking out? Yeah, I mean, it's, he's just so inspirational. He's the best coach I've ever had in my life. I would not trade him for anything. Uh, the fact that he is going through, you know, this cancer, his fight with cancer right now, and he hasn't missed, you know, practice. He hasn't missed workouts. He hasn't missed film session. He's there. You know, he has a family. He has four little kids, and he still has time to come and help us get better to chase our dream. It's just an inspiration. I couldn't have thanked him any more or asked for a better person. He's incredible. Yes. And uh, Logan, what's his, a good friend of ours at 97.7 The Zone, he's had a, a meteoric rise to the coaching fraternity. He's now back at his alma mater from Huntsville. What kind of relationship have you, had? Have you, got, have you been building with John Summerall? Oh, yeah, Coach Summerall, yeah. Uh, he told me, he said, you better talk me up down there, man. You know, we're Bama boys. <laughs> I said, all right, I will. No, but Coach Summerall is awesome. You know, he's a linebacker's guy, so he's, he's a big football guy. We just love cutting up. He's a good guy for sure. Do we have anything else? Very good, Logan. Thank right. you. Terrific. Thank you all.